Okay, in today's video, we're going to go ahead and make a panel that shows up when our game goes to start. We'll have the, I don't know, let's put the title on there and let's put a play button on there. And then when we click the play button, that's when our game is going to start. And then when it ends, when we get one wrong, it'll pop back up. And let's make it cover the buttons as well. So, you know, something about the same size, maybe a little bit bigger than our actual play area. So let's get started. So I'm going to come down this game UI. I'm going to go ahead, right click, and I'm going to create what's called the canvas. There we go. And a canvas really is just an image, but we're going to use it to put everything else underneath it. So where is my canvas? And I'm sorry, it's not the canvas we want. We've already got the canvas. We want a panel. My bad. So we're going to go in, go ahead, create a panel. There we go. Now it looks a little better. See how it kind of grayed out? That's just the color that's assigned to it. You can put any color you want. And it has a bit of alpha right now. It looks to be about 50-50. But what I want to do first is go ahead and make sure that it's aligned with the center. And then I'm just going to come in and drag it down a bit. Maybe about there. And about there, a little bit wider, it looks like. And let's just go ahead and make it an even number for both. So I'm just going to say 540. And let's do 680. At least that's what it is for me. It doesn't have to be precise. To be honest, it's probably bigger than I really need, but it's what I want. So like I said before, it's really just an image. We notice here it has the image component on it. And I'm going to go ahead and actually one thing I want to do with the change in the color is make it a little less transparent. So bring up the opacity. I want to see what's behind it, but not so much. So for me, about 207 seems to be good. Again, a lot of this is just season to taste. And nothing I want to do with it after that. So with that selected, I'm going to go ahead, rename it. And I'm going to call it Menu. Now let's call it Play Menu. The name really doesn't matter because we're not going to refer to it, refer to it by name. It's just to be more descriptive in the hierarchy. So I'm going to go ahead, right click on it. I want to add two things. I want to add a text. And I'm also going to go ahead and add a button. There we go. I'll start off the text. I want to align that kind of to the center middle. Or sort of the center top. Right up there. And I'll leave the button where it is. And the text, I'm going to change the title. I'm going to drag it down just a bit. Let me zoom in here so I can see it a bit better. I'm going to drag this down a bit just to make it a bit bigger this way. About there. And I'm going to go ahead, name the game. I think I called it Simple Simon. Now we've already gone over on how to change fonts. So if you want to go ahead and change your font, by all means, knock yourself out. And I'm going to center it. I'll move it down a bit to be in the center of this box. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make my own font size. I want it to be in the 40s again. Good enough. I'm not going to bother changing. Well, we do have that other font. Since we do already have one in here. I'll go ahead and pick that one. Looks like I want a bigger font. Uh, not quite that big. Let's, what would a 90 point font? How big do I have to be for that? Maybe a bit bigger. Let's try about a 120. There we go. And of course, you can go ahead and change the color if you want. I do. I want yellow. I'm going to add an outline. Nothing new here so far. Shadow. I want a three-point shadow on this one. There we go. And let's go ahead and take a look at this button. Right out the bat, instead of saying button, I'm going to call it play button. Let's actually capitalize that. And for this here, there's nothing we need to play around with just yet. We're not going to bother changing the image or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is expand it and we have this text and this is what shows up on the button. And I'm just going to say play. And let's go ahead and change the size of that button a bit. So I'm going to make the height twice of what it is. So maybe 60. Good enough. And we probably should adjust the size as well. Make it fit a little bit better. Sure, that looks great. And I know some people out there are going, why aren't you just using best fit? Um, I just like to scale up myself to make it fit the, to the size I want. But if you're in a hurry, especially if you're just prototyping, clicking best fit, nothing wrong with it. 
Okay, so I've got my play button up, everything else. Let's go ahead and start making a script for this. So I'm going to right click, create C sharp script. I'm going to call it um, play menu. And I bet you can't guess what I'm going to attach that to. <laughs> the play menu panel. There we go. Let's go ahead and we'll open that up. And the first thing I want to get done. So let's get that play button set up. So we're going to go ahead and make a public method. In this case, we do not need to have a return type for this. So we're just going to say void. And I'm going to say play button. I'm not going to pass in any parameters. And for now, let's just quickly do a debug.log. And we'll have to get rid of those, the comment. But I'm going to say play button pressed. I'll save that off. Let's come back into Unity. We'll go ahead and select that play button itself, not the text. I'm going to shrink it down, the actual play button itself. And we have these on click events for all of the buttons. So on this particular button, I'm going to go ahead and add an event. So we click plus. It says what game object? This is the game object that has the script attached to it that we're going to use for clicking. And in this case, I've gone ahead and attached it to the play menu. So I'm going to drag that in. Now we have a choice up here of what function. So if we go ahead and select that, we now have access to all of the scripts that are attached to it. So we have the game object one, any class that it's part of. So if we come down to the play menu one, that's the one we wrote. And we can go down and look for the public method that we just created here, the play button. And just set it like that. So now every time we press this button during runtime, it's going to go ahead and go, oh, look, I was pressed. So go ahead to this game object. We're going to grab that play menu script and use the play menu or sorry, the play button. And you can add multiple events for on clicks. In this case, I don't want multiple ones. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. And let's go ahead and take a look here. We should get a, some debug down here at the bottom. So I'll go ahead, hit play. And let's go ahead and reset the console. And hit play. There we go. Play button pressed. So that's how that works. Now that's how we're actually going to start our game. So if we go back into the code, if we go into, I believe it's game managers where we're actually starting the game right now. Yeah, right here. We're going ahead, resetting the game. We're setting the button index, setting the button index, and then going ahead and calling the coroutine to start the coroutine. We want to change that up a bit now. So we have this method down here that we're calling to start our game. Let's go make this public. So we can call it from outside of this class. I'm actually going to copy this coroutine, comment it out, come back into my play menu. I need a reference to that game object, which is the game manager. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the game manager. I'm just going to call it GM. Then I'm going to come here. When I press, I'll leave the debug log up there first. We can go ahead and delete it if you don't want it. Start coroutine. I'm going to use the I enumerator routine one. And that is going to be GM dot and uh, was it start play? Something like that. Let me take a look here. What was it called again? Play game. And we'll go ahead. We'll save that off. Let's come back in. Uh, we have an error. Let's figure this out. And we forgot the open and close in parentheses here. So if we come back in, go ahead, let it recompile. There we go. We'll go ahead, hit clear. Now I'm going to take my play menu and I've got to attach the game manager script now, which I apparently forgot to make public. <laughs> we'll go ahead and make that public, jump back in. There we go. Game manager, put it on. Let's hit play. And check it out. So the game started. Now we have to hide this. Now there are a couple ways we can do this. We can go ahead and just turn the image itself off, but that's not going to work. We could turn the game object itself off and that'll work. And then we could go ahead and set another method up in our, when the game is over to go ahead and turn it back off. I don't like that way a hundred percent because we have to get another reference. We have to couple more coupling going on. Uh, when we get into the event system, this is one of the things I really want to come back and address is being able to turn this menu on and off without having all these references. But for now, I just want to keep it as simple as possible. 
So what I'm going to do is just come down, make another method for it. I am going to make it public. Void active. Yeah, activate. And I'll go ahead and set a parameter called bool inside. And I'm just going to call it is active. And then we're going to go ahead in here and just toggle it on and off. Now, up until now, we've looked at our parameters such as you know, bool active, whatever's passed in is what we use with. We can go ahead and set a default value here, which is what I'm going to do. Let's go ahead and set true to be the default value. So now when this method is called, we can call it active and set it to true. And that means when this method here is called, this is active parameter will automatically be set to true. We can also call it and set it to false. So when this method is called, it's set to false. Or we can just call is active and end it like this. And that will default out to the true value or whatever value you have set as the default. In this case, it's true. So I'm actually going to go ahead, copy that up, put it right here, say false. So we're going to pass in false. And then in here, just to keep it simple, I'm just going to say game object dot set active to whatever is being passed in. Now, one of your assignments next week is going to be to flush this out using an if block when we're using the event system to be able to toggle things back on and off. But for now, we're keeping it simple. All right, so now when we go ahead and start this up, it should just appear for us. So start, boom, it's gone. And I'm not sure, did the game start? It does not look like it. Try that one more time. It should have started. It started last time. Or so I thought. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get that working. Hmm, I seem to be blanking how to start a coroutine from another script. Now, to keep this video as fast as possible, or as short as possible, I'm just actually going to come to Game Manager. Uh, this doesn't need to be public anymore. I'm just going to keep it private. I'm going to create another public, and I'm just going to call it Start Game. Of course, it said public, void start game. And this will be now, this now will be the method responsible for actually starting the game. So instead of calling a coroutine directly from the other script, we'll just call this one regular method, which should start this. So let's go ahead, jump back in. Oh, actually, do I need this public? No, because it fails in here as well. All right, so we'll go ahead. Uh, this is private. It doesn't work anymore, which is great. We'll just go gm dot start game. So we'll go ahead. We'll clear this out. We'll hit play. Uh, make sure game manager is selected. So we should see some stuff added here. I'm not recording my game audio right now. With my current recording setup, I can't. But for what we've been working on, it really doesn't matter. So let's go ahead. We'll hit play. And there we go, it's selected one. I'll go ahead, blue. It went ahead and selected two. I missed which one there was, I think it's yellow. Yeah. So now we want to set it up so that when we fail, instead of just automatically restarting over, we get that display screen again. We'll come back in, we'll have to go into the game manager script. Uh, down here where we're resetting the game. So we want to do all that. We want to set the score. We clear everything out. And then right here where we're actually starting the game back up, I want to go ahead and display that menu again. So I'll come up here, make a reference for it. And I'm going to put it above the color order. Let's put it at the very top. And we'll say serialize field. We want the play menu. And we'll just call it play menu. Save that off. And let's go in and take a look how we have this set up. Um, we have the script attached to the panel that we want to toggle on and off. So if we go ahead and select the game manager, drag that menu into there. Uh, what we can do now is go ahead and call that one method to toggle us on and off. So in here, we're going to say if is active, and we can do a short form here. Instead of doing is active is equal to true. Instead of saying that, we can just say is active. Since it's a Boolean value, uh, the default is true. We're going to go say, you know, if this is true, go ahead and do this. Else, do something else. So if it's setting to be false, game object dot set active is active. And to be honest, we don't really need this line here. We could still leave that up top, but I might want to do a few other things here. So let's cut it out. We'll put that up top. We'll go ahead and put our parentheses in here. 
So when we're active, maybe there's uh, some sound effects that go off when the game starts. Maybe there's a, a song or something you want to start when the game plays. Maybe when uh, you're turning this off. Actually, it's when you're turning it off. This is when you're turning it off. So this is actually when your game starts. So maybe you have some sound effects here. There might just be some visual effects or something. And let's actually put some comments in here. This is called when the, when the game is starting. Panel is turned off. This is called when the game is over. The panel is turned back on. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this GM down to here. So when we turn it off, with this panel off, we know to start the game. And I'm also just gonna move this to the bottom. I just want it to turn off after the game has started. I don't think it's really gonna matter. I just, the order I like to look at it in. Save that off, come back in. And whoops, there's one more thing we gotta comment out in the game manager. And that's right here. We're no longer gonna start the game automatically when we fail. What we're gonna call is that menu, that panel we just made, which was play menu dot activate. And we're gonna call true. We don't have to pass it in because we set a default value. And that way there, it goes ahead and puts that menu up so we can press that button and get the game to restart. So let's try that out. It was a little rushed, made a few typos, but everything should be working now. So we got our game, high score is four. We'll go ahead and hit play. Game starts. So we'll just go ahead and do a few here. Let's set a new high score. There's still a few things we got to take care of which I will leave for homework for, for you as we develop other games. Uh, for instance, we could just start slamming all these buttons right now while it's going. We don't want that. We should actually deactivate the, the ability for the player to press until the, the pattern is done. But uh, that's really not that hard. I'll leave it to you. So my current score is five. We had a new high score. Let's go ahead and end it. And there we go. It's done. It's gone ahead and cleared it all out for us. The game is all ready to start up again. And when we hit play, away it goes. So there we go. We got a very basic version of the Simon game. Uh, we've learned a ton with not just Unity, but also coding for Unity in this series. Uh, we're going to have a week of just C-sharp development. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and jump into our next game, which would be kind of like a 3D space shooter. Everyone always needs a, a 3D space shooter, right? And the main thing that we're going to be taking out of there is a lot of uh, physics ray casting. But anyway, thanks for watching this series, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You'd be a pretty chatty guy over there when I'm not walking through a forest or being stalked by eagles and falcons, lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>